Hi, I'm Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of the Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. Today, we're going to be talking about something you're going to want to know about, and that is printing. So, you're going to get your photos just right, great images, you want to print them and share them. Fortunately, Photoshop CS4 has a lot of great improvements that really streamline the printer interface, give you greater control, and supports higher quality output. Let's take a look. So if you have an image open, you can go ahead and choose File, Print. You'll notice that the whole Print with Preview option is no longer there because the default is to give you a preview when printing. So we'll go ahead and choose that, and it brings up the new printing dialog box. Now, one of the things I like here is that it actually gives you a preview of how the image is going to fit on the page. Here I have a panoramic image, which is quite large, so it's not going to fit on the page that we have for the image. Now, we can go to Page Setup, and it's going to bring up the standard Page Setup dialog box. And my printer supports different sizes, so I can choose, for example, maybe I'm going to go to tabloid paper, which is an 11 by 17, and I'll specify a landscape orientation. Notice how the preview updates automatically, which is great. Now, we're seeing that not all of the colors are coming through exactly right. That's because I'm printing an RGB image here, but it works well. We could choose to see warnings for things as we're working. If we were actually printing to a printer that was going to use CMYK, we could even choose the gamut warning, which would indicate out of range colors. Now, a lot of inkjets will take RGB images just fine, but this will warn you if you're going to a CMYK printer if you have those out of gamut colors that you need to correct. Notice that the whole image is not fitting onto the paper. So we can go ahead and check the box here that says Scale to Fit Media. And it automatically adjusts the size of the image to fit onto the page. Now, a lot of times you're going to adjust the paper size to fit the photo, but this is a quick way to quickly get the image sized so it'll fit on the particular printer you're using. This is really easy because when you choose this, Photoshop does all the math for you and shrinks the image down so it'll fit on the page. The good news is, is it's just shrinking it down for the print. The original image remains untouched, so you're not discarding any resolution that you've captured. Now, we have a few other options here. We can see measurements in inches or centimeters, points or picas. Depending upon your country, you're probably going to choose inches or centimeters. We also have some other options here as we're working. One of the things I recommend is allowing your printer to manage colors if you are using an inkjet printer. You could actually assign a rendering intent or a printer profile as needed. I'm going to stick with perceptual in this case. And if you're doing CMYK output, you have a lot of additional options down here that will allow you to specify how to handle the color profiles. Under output, we also can turn other things on to make it a little bit easier. We have the ability to add registration marks if we were going to be doing film output crop marks to help us cut the image, center crop marks if you need those, and this really comes in handy if you're going to be using a ruler to cut the image out, you're going to be using an X-Acto knife and a mat, you want to mount the image. These cut marks can make it a little bit easier so you know where to trim the image. We also have other things in here such as labels or descriptions that we could turn on, and of course you could actually do a negative output if you're going to film. Now, an important one here, if your printer supports it, is send 16-bit data. I'm using a slightly older printer here, which does not support 16-bit. But if you're on a Mac and you have a newer printer, many of those printers do support 16-bit data. And this is absolutely fantastic. It's going to give you much more information to work with when you generate the print. So, be sure you have a 16-bit image and a printer that supports the 16-bit data. And if any of you lovely printer manufacturers out there would like to send me one of those printers, I'd be more than happy to show people how to use it. But it's a great option. I'm going to be upgrading my own printer soon, and this really will give you much greater color fidelity. Now, a few more things you could deal with in here as you're working. Notice you could change the orientation of the page if you need to. You can also match print colors or gamut warning. Do what you need to to get the printer right. If you have multiple printers, you can specify which printer you want to target, and that really gives you some great options. If you want to store those options, you could just click Done, and it won't print, but it'll store those options for the next time. And here we're opening up a 16-bit image, and let's just get it exactly right how we want in RAW here. 
There we go. Tweak exposure just a little bit. And open. Let's go ahead and choose print. Notice same sort of options. I'm going to flip this to a landscape orientation. Switch back. We'll use letter. Scale it to fit the media. That's all set there. Mark any output things that we need. And again, this is a 16-bit image, but you'll need a 16-bit printer to support it. Now, the 16-bit printing is currently a Mac-only feature, and that's pretty rare for Adobe. As soon as the Windows operating system supports 16-bit printing, Adobe has stated that they will roll out that functionality in Photoshop. So, if you're working with a newer printer and you're on a Mac, be sure to take advantage of that 16-bit printing. Increased processing time by the printer, but much better results. When you're all set and you want to print, simply click Print, and it will go ahead and send your image. Notice the default printing box comes up. If you need to, you can adjust things like paper handling. You can adjust the schedule so it knows when to print the job if you'd like to submit it but have it hold for a while. And even take advantage of things like additional color management options if needed. When you're set, you would click print to then send it to your printer and you'd be in great shape. Now, if you've already set everything up and you want to make an additional print, you could take advantage of a new command and that is file print one copy. When you choose this, it's going to use the last settings that you loaded for that image and print it again. So if you have done printing for a particular image and you've gone through and set up everything how you need it, you could just reprint that image with the exact same settings. Remember, simply choose file print one copy. That's it for this episode of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. I'm your host Rich Harrington. We've got a lot of cool things that you can check out over at our website at cs4.com. That's C-S-F-O-U-R dot com. We've got a great contest going with prizes that you can win, as well as all of the other episodes in the training series. So be sure to check that out. If you'd like to learn more about Photoshop on a regular basis, we have some ongoing podcast series you might be interested in. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. You can find out about it at rastervector.com. It's for general interest Photoshop enthusiasts, digital photographers, graphic designers, web folks, as far as those of you working in video and motion graphics, you're going to want to check out our other series, Photoshop for Video, and its blog at photoshopforvideo.com. So, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Rich Harrington, and tune into our other episodes. Thanks.